All right, uh, hi everybody. My name is Dan Ducart. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a local coach here in the Columbus area. I've been with CYDA Belfry for about five years, high school coaching, um, done some pre posts, private lessons. I'm at the rink a lot. Um, I, what I really want to talk about today is transition in, in the game and um, basically how we as coaches can add to the existing um, framework of transition hockey. I think that all of us understand its place in the game, but maybe aren't sure the best ways to implement it. Um, so that's really what I wanna talk about. Um, just to make sure we're all on the same page here, I wanna just define what transition is um, per dictionary.com. Transition is the process or a period of changing from one state or condition to another. Um, we all understand that hockey is obviously a dynamic sport. Um, and so, again, I just really want to dig into to how this kind of impacts uh, our game. So why is playing in transition important? Well, I did a little digging and per a hockey graphs article from a few years ago, about 42% of all five on five goals were scored within five seconds of a zone entry. Um, I think it's easy to conceptualize this if you think about uh, odd man rushes, catching the defense, um, maybe on a bad change, et cetera. Um, and so I, I kind of want to dive into, into this uh, concept a little bit more. So off, from an offensive perspective, being a good transition team allows you to prevent a defense from establishing their structure and also create odd man rushes while defensively the same holds true, right? So if you're a good defensive transition team, you're able to prevent the offensive team from basically creating high danger attacks against you. Okay, so we all understand, you know, that on a, on a high level, but then I got thinking about, okay, in the NHL, are, does it bear out that good transition teams are good teams? And uh, inversely, is that true? Are bad, in, are bad transition teams bad teams? And this was from most of this past season. This is from Jay Fresh um, on Twitter. And uh, as you can see from this graphic, I think, you know, without painting too fine a, a picture here, I think most of us would agree you'd rather be in that first column um, mm -hmm. than, the, than the last column. Uh, in other words, you know, the, the top teams in the league are consistently scoring at a higher percentage of their goals on the rush. Uh, especially when compared with, you know, the, the basement dwelling teams. So this, this really had me thinking about, um, you know, like, okay, what is it about these teams that allow them to be sex, successful in transition? Um, and, and we'll get to that in just a minute. Um, this past spring, I was fortunate enough to uh, coach alongside Dave Caruso, RJ Umberger, uh, Lee Harris, Ryan Dopp, and, um, I have a ton of respect for all those guys with the Columbus Chill pre-post team. It's a high school pre-post team. It was a camp, um, effectively. And some of you might be familiar with this from USA Hockey modules in the past. Um, but this was a new concept to me. And Dave did a great job of introducing this, the four rules of hockey. So you can think of the four rules of hockey. Uh, rule number one, you're the puck carrier. Your goal is to create offense. Rule two is you're, uh, your team has the puck, you're on offense, but you're not necessarily the puck carrier. So you're in a support valve position. Rule three would be the inverse. So defense on the puck. So you're a, the immediate player guarding the attacking player. And four would be a support, support role on the defensive side of the puck. Okay. And I really like that framework. I thought, um, you know, it's an interesting way of teaching and, and I think it, it it made sense to a lot of our kids to think of, of hockey in one of these four roles. Um, so, like I said, this was a pre-post team. This camp was this spring and it, it kind of ended up uh, running up right against the playoffs, the NHL playoffs. And so I found myself, you know, in this camp thinking about these four roles and then also watching, basically watching playoff hockey every night. And I was just thinking about how I could add to this or how I could use it for my own coaching curriculum. Um, and I kind of came up with my own version of this. And the, the reason I'm showing this slide is I think that uh, one thing that I don't want to paint too, you know, I don't want to overgeneralize here, but I think that coaches 
do a good job of segmenting different topics. For example, uh, a, a coach will spend time focusing on defensive zone coverage or a neutral zone breakout or offensive zone possession type of plays. But if you think about it, so much of the game is played between pucks. Um, Jack Han, who is a, a presenter later today, did some tracking and found that there's about 400 turnovers in, an, in a typical NHL game. Um, so, so if we kind of dig into that, there's 400 instances where you might be roll one or roll three, but that's, that's very fluid. It's changing all the time. So this was my version, if you will, of the same, the same type of roles. So if you think of role one as, you know, you're a player on offense and your objective is to create a scoring chance. Well, a lot of times in a game, your team might have just gained possession. And at that very you know, finite moment, you are able to catch the defensive team in a spot that you might not have been able to otherwise and you can create a high scoring danger, a high danger scoring chance, whereas you might not have been able to from a strictly offensive set. And then conversely, um, you know, roles three and four would be going in, you know, strictly in a defensive posture. And then role four would be transitioning from offensive to defensive transition. And again, it's the inverse. You're trying to prevent a high, high danger scoring chance. Okay. So I think, you know, I've established why I think transition is important, but I really wanted to see um, you know, in the playoffs, if transition has as big an impact as, um, you know, my hypothesis. And so I took a look at the Tampa Bay Lightning from this past playoffs. And in four rounds, they scored 75 goals, which is buku. That's crazy that they scored that many goals. And I immediately kind of started tracking uh, and categorizing how these goals were scored. And this is, it's a high number, but I'll try to explain here. So 30 goals were removed from the sample. 23, they scored 23 power play goals, three empty net goals, uh, two shorthanded goals, and two offensive zone faceoff plays that were scored like one second after a faceoff, basically. And, um, you know, a handful of the, of, uh, the, sh uh, the power play goals and all of the empty net goals were transition plays. But I really wanted to talk about um, the goals that happened in the course of play at five on five specifically. So that ends, that keeps you with 45 goals left in the sample, which, you know, would I like the sample to be bigger for sure, but you know, it, it kind of is what it is. It's, it's, it's enough that you can still do some damage. And what I found was that 31 of these 45 goals came off transitions. So that 69% number um, tracks with what the top teams in the league scored in transition this year. Um, and, and just to put a fine point on it, I define transition here as either off of a turnover uh, or from a defensive, uh, like starting in the defensive zone, going through all the way up the ice into the offensive zone and scoring within five seconds of, of uh, gaining the zone, like we talked about earlier on that 42%. So again, 69% of these goals came off of transition. Okay, I went back and forth, whoops. I went back and forth about whether I would show this video. Um, two, I guess the two reasons I wouldn't are one, when I imported this video into PowerPoint, the quality took a hit. It's admittedly not great quality. So that's one. And then the other thing is it's like a three or four minute video. And I was like, well, do I want, you know, of my 15 minutes here, 20 minutes or whatever, do I want a lot, you know, a sizable chunk to what's essentially like a highlight video. But then uh, the reason I ended up deciding to keep it in is I think it puts such a, it, it does a better job of basically capturing the points I'm trying to make than anything I could say. Um, I think any of us who watched the playoffs this year, you'll remember a lot of these goals. Like these were important um, at times, iconic goals. And these are not even all of the goals. Like these are just the sampling of the 31 goals that I just mentioned. So I'm gonna shut up here and let this, this video run.
They're not bad. All right, <clears throat> thanks for bearing with me. I know that video quality wasn't great, uh, especially for those on Zoom, so apologies there. Um, but I, I hope you could take at least the, the, the gist away from it that Tampa was unbelievable in transition and that might've been the catalyst for helping them win the cup. Okay, so this is all, this is all well and good, but how do we as coaches you know, make actionable um, you know, action here uh, to really add to our coaching curriculum? So I pulled a few drills, concepts that, that I like, that I've, I've used before. Um, and, and I'm just gonna kind of walk and talk through those quickly here. The first one is something that uh, I stole from uh, TJ Manisterski. He used to be, a, he was the head coach at Division III Col uh, Curry College. He's now the assistant coach at Union. Um, he shared this last year um, and happy to send a link to a video for anybody who's looking for it. Basically, this drills a one on two that turns into a two on one. So the puck carrier will be on the on the hash mark on the wall and he'll skate up. So if you think about it from like a attacking posture, this is a forward in the defensive zone breaking out of the zone. Um, the forward on the dot in the defensive and the zone is really like a back checking player. And so you can think of him as like a player who was on offense. The other team got the puck and now he's tracking back. The red, the defenseman, is in an offensive posture. He's the offensive defenseman, and he's there as a support option. So the drill starts with the, the forward on the wall skating the puck out of the zone. The, the back checking forward will angle that player off, stick lift, and steal the puck. Okay, The defender is there, again, as like a defense valve. Um, as soon as the puck changes possession, the two players that didn't have the puck become the attacking players against the other sides forward. So in other words, they turn up ice back the way they just came from and it's a two on one. I've done a few variations of this. Um, I like to give a player like I, I don't necessarily love drills where um, the player with the puck is basically he has no oppor opportunity to do anything other than lose the puck. So we gave them a kind of a carrot him or her where they can skate, you know, up to the red line. And if they have the puck still, they can turn back and make it one on two. Um, but we're really trying to prevent that. So in an ultimate, in an optimum world, the, you know, the two, the two players without the puck are going to steal the puck and then turn back. The other change that I've made to this is you can see at center ice here, there's like um, some sort of barrier or cones or tires or whatever. And the, and the players have to go around that. And I, and I think that's like a fine concept, but one thing that we've done as a variation to this drill is if 
if the defending players, the two players without the puck are able to steal the puck before the blue line, then instead of pulling the puck out of the zone and then regrouping, let's just turn straight up ice and attack. So that way you don't, you know, it's more game like you're not going to pull the puck out of the zone if you already have the puck in the zone, et cetera. So, but anyway, I think this is a great drill to just work on. We don't have the puck, uh, you know, that's defense away from the puck. We do have the puck. Now we're in attack mode. Um, and then these two drills, uh, again, these are just simple concepts. This three on two, you can think of this as like everybody lines up as though it's an opening five on five face off. You'll have coaches on the wall with pucks. And at the same time, they'll both dump pucks into uh, each zone, one puck in each zone. And the goal here is for the defenders to retrieve the puck and make it quick up to their forwards as fast as possible. And ultimately, it's basically a race against time. And we're trying to three on to the other team before they can get set. Um, you know, I've seen this drill kind of go awry where a team struggles to get that retrieval and it ends up being like a two on O. And that's kind of the point. Like we're trying to be quick here and transition. Um, uh, one thing I didn't, I didn't write here, but you might add is a four check just to put a little bit pressure. I mean, the pressure in this drill isn't necessarily a four checker, it's time. You can imagine a scenario in a game where uh, there's like a line change and there might not be any actual pressure on you, but you, the pressure is the time that you have to get rid of the puck. Um, the, the last drill or concept that I'll talk about here is a three on three uh, in zone game. I think, you know, probably all of us have run small area games where it'll be a three on three or a two on two um, and someone will be rewarded. <laughs> There'll be a defenseman uh, who, you know, the puck, kicks off the goalies pads and all of a sudden they're Johnny on the spot and they get a goal, even though they were defending just a second ago. Um, you know, one way to mitigate that um, is to add some sort of um, one way to mitigate that is to add some sort of play where they'll have to pass to um, back to their line and that that defenseman will be like an activating player. Um, and I think that's like a great, that's a great idea. Um, but this, this idea of a three on three for this concept is you designate three players as forwards and three players as defensemen. And obviously forwards get a point for scoring a goal. Um, and then the defensemen get a point for skating or better yet passing the puck through a set of tires. Uh, you can posi really position these wherever you want. I like to do it near the top of the zone. And the idea here is that the defending team at the, right after they get the puck via a turnover their goal is to try to get the puck up as, as fast as possible. So there, you can put two tires or two sets of tires or whatever. You can move the tires throughout the zone um, to keep it from getting stale. But I think that's a great way to teach your defensemen how to play in transition. Um, so I hope, you know, I hope everybody was able to take something away from this, whether it was a drill or just a concept. Um, if you have any questions or feedback, this is my contact info. I'm, I'm happy to get in touch and thank you.